One of the most intriguing things about history is how it has influenced the life we lead today. Especially when we understand that a lot of the things we take for granted came about by accident. We all know how useful inventions have more than once been the byproduct of other processes. And I guess we can say the same about language, both written and spoken. English belongs to the Indo-European language family, but has also incorporated vocabulary and grammar from other language groups during its evolution. Linguists think that Indo-European languages began with a common ancestor, referred to as Proto-Indo-European, that developed either in Anatolia or the steppe region before moving both east and west. I feel an affinity with the idea of it having developed in Anatolia because that's where the oldest megaliths are and it's hard not to see the culture that built them as extraordinarily sophisticated and influential for their time. I find it hard to believe that later megalithic cultures were not in some way connected with these ancient construction wizards. So the idea of their language travelling with them as they took their architectural techniques to other lands is rather attractive. But this video isn't about the Proto-Indo-European language. That needs a whole series. However, it's worth mentioning because in this video I'm talking about the creation of the alphabetic script that we use to write down the English language today. It did not develop in tandem with the language that we speak, but appears to have come about as a strange quirk of fate. The earliest record of a written language comes from ancient Mesopotamia and dates to the Bronze Age. Sumerian was the language spoken by that civilization, a language isolate, which means it's not related to any other linguistic groups. The Mesopotamians wrote this language using cuneiform pictographs on clay tablets. After some time, cuneiform was used to write other languages such as Akkadian and took on syllabic elements, meaning pictures represented sounds rather than whole words, so a little more like an alphabet. Shortly after this, Egyptian hieroglyphs developed in the early Bronze Age and were mostly logographic with some syllabic parts. They consisted of more than 1,000 different characters and continued to be used in some places up until the classical period. But it was the invention of the alphabetic system that truly revolutionized the way we write because it simplified the whole process of literacy. We write English in the Latin alphabet, but there are many alphabets in use today and they all have the same origin. Around 1900 BCE, during ancient Egypt's Middle Kingdom, a series of turquoise mines in the mountains of southern Sinai gained importance on an industrial scale. Expeditions to the mines were frequent, and people from many different strata of society were involved in their success. The area where the mines are located is known as Serebit el Kadim. For 800 years, a temple to Hathor, built near the mines, offered spiritual protection to those working in them and making the long journeys to and from this desert region. The inside of the temples, as well as many stella leading up to it, were decorated with hieroglyphic inscriptions. In 1917, Egyptologist William Flinders Petrie and his wife Hilda discovered graffiti in and around the mines whilst on an archaeological expedition. This graffiti, etched into rocks rather than formal stella, appeared to be a different script to Egyptian hieroglyphs. Flinders Petrie was convinced the script was the first alphabetic system to be discovered, but this was only confirmed when the characters were translated by the Egyptologist Alan Gardner in 1916. After studying the inscriptions, he recognised the Canaanite word Balat, the female counterpart to Baal, and a possible equivalent to the goddess Hathor. Furthermore, two inscriptions were found on a 25 centimeter sphinx figurine inside the temple in both hieroglyphs and the strange script. The first read the beloved Hathor, the mistress of turquoise, and the second read the beloved of Balat. It became apparent that the strange script was in fact a simplified version of hieroglyphs, but instead of a sign representing a word, it represented a consonant only. This was the first alphabetic script and is known by experts as Proto-Sinaitic.
It's most likely that these graffiti first appeared during the reign of Amenemhet III in the Middle Bronze Age. There is some debate as to who made these inscriptions, who invented the alphabet at these turquoise mines in the Sinai Desert. The general consensus is that it was created by Asiatic people, most likely of Canaanite origin. At that time in Egypt, many Asiatic people lived in the Eastern Delta region, and there are records of Egyptians discussing their mixed parentage. Also, the fact that a Canaanite goddess was referred to lends further weight to this idea. However, were these people learned? Were they officials or scribes? Or was it the turquoise mine workers themselves that etched out this new way of writing that was to make literacy significantly easier and less specialized than in the past? Both are possible, but the crude and inconsistent forms of these early letters have led some scholars to suggest that it was the turquoise miners themselves who, barely literate in hieroglyphics, used them as a basis for a simplified writing system to note down inscriptions in their own language. In 1993, similar inscriptions to those at Serebit were discovered in the Wadi El Hol near Luxor. The inscriptions consisted of two lines carved into limestone rocks in the valley. At first, it was thought they might be older than those at Serebit, but experts now think that they came later. It's likely that miners from Serebit Al Hadim, who were familiar with the script, traveled to Wadi El Hol. It took a mighty long time before alphabetic scripts caught on. It's not entirely clear how they traveled from Serebit al Qadim to other areas, but it was probably via Canaanite caravans. So exactly how did our modern day alphabets evolve from these Middle of Bronze Age etchings? Here are a few fascinating examples of how some of the letters in the Latin alphabet came to be over many years. The letter A is thought to originate from the Egyptian hieroglyph depicting an ox and meaning ox. The turquoise miners created a simplified version of this for their sound alp, which eventually morphed into the Phoenician aleph and the Greek alpha before becoming the first letter of the Latin alphabet. The letter H started its life as the Egyptian hieroglyph for a fence before becoming the proto sinaitic Hasra, the Phoenician Heth, and the seventh letter of the Greek alphabet Eta. The letter K originates from the Egyptian hieroglyph for a hand. It then morphed into the prono Sinaitic K, Phoenician Kap, and the Greek letter Kappa. So every time you write the letter A, just remember it started out as an ox. How crazy is that? As the megalith hunter, I like to think that the first written languages were not really the earliest ones. I like to think that the megalithic monuments I love so much are a language written in stone. But that is a code I am yet to crack. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Share it with your history loving friends too. I'm on Patreon, so if you'd like to support my work, through it. The link is in the description below. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter where I post regularly. And I have a website too, megalithhunter.com.